Hi, everybody. Um, I've been asked to talk about participatory action research uh, and why uh, my research has shown it to be so effective on addressing complex adaptive issues. Um, so what's our topic today? Surprisingly enough, complex adaptive issues and the use of PAR to solve them, PAR being participatory action research. A couple of definitions get us started. Um, I'll call it PAR, Participatory Action Research. And what does it mean? It's a group of people, and they can be informal or formal networks, communities of practice, your family and your friends, uh, people who are working together to get something done, either personally, professionally, or part of your community. You do that in four stages. You diagnose a situation. You act to improve it. You measure what your effectiveness of what you've done, and you reflect. Pretty simple, straightforward, strategic, but very effective. Because it works in cycles, you go on and on and on until you get even the most difficult things show improvement. Uh, I've been researching the effect of this process for the last five years, and I can say categorically that this is will create personal transformation. You will find solutions to some of the trickiest problems you face. What are complex adaptive problems? Well, they are places where reality hurts. Uh, we feel confused. We feel alienated from each other. And why is that? Because it puts us in the middle of the tension between the ideals that we hold in our head and our hearts for our lives and the realities that we actually face. So if we think it should be a different way, we are in the middle of a complex adaptive problem. Participatory action research uses that tension to create transformation. That's why it's so brilliant. So I'm going to suggest that everyone take a minute and think to yourself, what complex adaptive problems are you facing? And then we'll go on and we'll look at how the PAR cycle can help you address these problems. Remember again, step one is to research and evaluate what has gone before, how others, what contributes to the problem that you're facing, and how others have solved that in the past. Step two, you plan you, and you implement actions. You've got to actually take some steps before you can measure the results of those actions. And then at the end of the first cycle, you will reflect on the process and decide what you're going to do next. Step two, taking action. And step three, measuring the action are what makes this process different from other strategic planning tools. Uh, let me go through the steps a little bit more slowly. Let's talk about diagnose. Uh, when I say you want to diagnose uh, your situation, you want to employ all the learning tools at your disposal. Now, that used to have been that you would have gone to books or magazines. Of course, today, you're going to spend quite a bit of time web researching, um, seeing what, who has written what, what other solutions are out there. You'll also look to see what networks are around you? Who is talking about this in your field, on the web, in your community? And you may even join some of those um, networks, some particularly powerful ones starting online. And finally, but certainly last but not least, you're going to discuss it with your friends and your family members, and you'll get their ideas. When all that is done, you'll have a couple of things that you could actually do that will get you started. This moves you into ACT. You want to act both individually and as a group of people. Every step by every person counts, especially when we're looking at things that are just vast problems, such as world hunger and, and uh, just any of those bigger problems. The bigger the problem, the more. We need lots of people, and every step counts. Um, you also want to take support from your group to succeed. None of us can co conquer these problems on our own. 
You want to focus on what you are doing right now, not on the future. Be like this little kid. Look and play and do what you're doing without having the adult eye about, oh, this is so big, I couldn't possibly do it. That won't get you anywhere. As you go forward with your actions, you want to keep constant measurement. You want to be measuring your progress. You want to also be measuring your enjoyment of the process and your outcomes. Let me talk a little bit about that. Keep a pulse with the people you are affecting. For instance, have over coffee, in focus groups, or in interviews, ask people what they think of what you're doing. They'll, they are, will be your best resource. Check in with each other in your group frequently. This will help your enjoyment of the process as a whole and will um, make your outcomes stronger. Notice our two little kids measuring each other. Remembering that you're trying to affect big change. Just like they're growing up, that's very big change. But consistently look for the small effects. Big change, small effects. And every once in a while, you may want to consider surveying the larger group that you're um, working with. You want to reflect on both personal and group reflection, um, which will help you orient your next steps towards success. Also, reflection helps us know what it is we can celebrate. So, as the man on the right hand is doing, reflect what worked and what didn't work in this last bit of process. You diagnosed, you took some action, you measured it, what worked and what was challenging. Personally, did this cause you joy? Did you learn new things? Was it fun to work with the people? Notice your joy level because if it's not creating some interest and some joy in you, you're probably not on the right track. And then once you look at those two things, what do you still need to learn? What are your obvious next steps? If you go through these processes, um, people all over the world can attest to the fact that you will get results that you can expect. As you'll see from the participants um, I've listed on the screen, people have told me that they will never teach the same way again. They will never administer a school the same way. They will always address problems, some of the most significant problems in education, differently. That's the part of the participatory action research that I um, have researched, but I also have worked with individuals transforming their lives, and they say absolutely the best process around. Now, if you're doing this work, keep up the good work. Um, step by step, you will help the environment make the changes you want to make, whatever it is that you're passionately interested in. If you're not doing this work and you're interested in it, or if you would need some help getting started, please give me a shout. I'm at james.alana at gmail.com. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, link to it, make comments, pass it on. Let's let the net network uh, get this process going even further in our communities. Take care.